This year we checked a big destination off of our list and took a cruise to the Greek Isles. And this is the good, bad, and ugly of a Greek Isles cruise. Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Jordan. And I'm Jared. And this is JJ, JJ Cruz. Cruz. We are very <laughs> excited to be bringing you a video all about Greece today. If you have a Greece cruise coming up, you're going to want to listen up because this video will be packed with cruise tips, cruise information, and vital things that are must knows before you take your Greek Isles cruise. But before we get into all of the good, bad, and ugly of the Greek Isles cruises, we invite you to subscribe to the channel. All we do is cruise content, and if you want to help us out, give us a subscribe. And if you don't like the content you see, you can always unsubscribe later. We spent a beautiful seven nights aboard the Disney Dream, leaving out of Civitavecchia, which is the Rome port, heading to Naples, Mykonos, Santorini, and Hania, Crete. These destinations are a first for us, minus Naples, but we're going to focus on the Greek Isles as this is a Greek Isles cruise review. We're going to be completely honest in this review, so that is why we shared the good, the bad, and the ugly. And let me tell you, you have to stay till the end because the ugly is something that if you don't know it ahead of time, it could ruin your cruise vacation. Let's start by talking about the good. And we can't talk about the good without mentioning the people. The people in Greece are some of the most friendly people that we have encountered in all of our Europe travels. Coming from the United States, you never know going to another country how people may or may not feel about you. And one thing I love is that we have found so many friendly people around the world and Greece is no different. The Greek people are fantastic, they're friendly, and they are ones that wanna be hospitable and welcome you in, whether it's their shop, their restaurant, or their home. Just a joy to be around. The island of Greece is filled with tradition and culture and history. And that's not only reflected with the people that live there, but the beautiful architecture and landscape that are around you. We know that Greece is one of the most Instagrammable places in the world, and it is really just as beautiful as you would ever imagine that it would be. You're constantly thinking that this is just not real that this is some like getaway destination that is a resort only, but it's a real place. This is a real place with real people that live there full year round. This is not just a resort. And it's incredible to think of the beauty that is in Greece all year round. You also have quite a bit of elevation on some of these islands. Santorini is kind of one giant cliff. So when you get actually to the top of the cliff, the views of the ocean and the other islands that surround it are completely indescribable. You have to go there to see it for yourself. It is so Instagrammable and photo op worthy. Everywhere you look, you can take a photo that will make your cousins and your neighbors jealous that they were on this cruise with you. What we love about this is that there are tours out there to help locals where they know the top spots to go and you can go ahead and help the local community by going ahead and going and purchasing one of these tours and having them take you around for the day and getting the top spots for the best Instagram photos. Moving on down the list, we have to mention the food. Ugh. If you are a fan of Greek food, the food in Greece does not disappoint. I will give a word of warning. I don't think anyone can prepare you for how huge the portions are. I think there was multiple times when we went into restaurants to eat food and Jared and I could have easily split an entree between the two of us. The food is just incredible. The euros, the lamb, the vegetables. We truly ate our way through this amazing country. Make sure you get some good tzatziki because the tzatziki there is <sighs> incredible. Along with the pita bread, everything Jordan mentioned and more. And like Jordan said, even though it's a little heavier, you cannot stop eating because it's that good. All right, this next good is something that I love. And Jordan, well, he can go without. <laughs> and that's regarding shopping. The shopping in Greece is like none other. There are so many mom and pop shops everywhere. Uh, and the amazing things you can find, everything from porcelain to rugs to uh 
table mats to souvenirs, t-shirts, clothing, apparel, all of it is available and it is fantastic. I got some bracelets from there. I mean, just some really cool things can be found across all of Greece. This is in Mykonos and Santorini. This is in Hania, Crete. Everywhere you go, there are so many great stores and shopping experiences. So if you're one that likes to shop, you can do so in the Greek Isles. I'm sure that this is something you could probably guess, but along with the incredible beauty on the island, this is a destination that is an ultimate relaxation vacation. The beach clubs and the beaches are so stunning. And you honestly don't need to get off the ship and do much more than take a picture and then go straight into some water. We loved our time on the beach in Crete, but there was opportunities to swim every stop of the way. One thing that's very popular are beach clubs, and you can see it even from the rooftops and the places that you go in Santorini. There are tons of day beach clubs or resort passes where you can swim with the incredible views all day long. Because of this, excursions through your cruise ship necessarily aren't needed. Now, of course, there are some key destinations that you may want to see on these islands, but if you don't actually care about the key sites, you can get off and go to a beach or go to a beach club on your own without having to pay for an expensive excursion on the ship. This is something that actually surprised both Jared and I. We didn't realize that this would be a destination quite like that, but just make sure that you know excursions are not necessary when visiting the Greek Isles. That was the good. Now let's talk about the bad, or if you've watched our reviews before, you know that some of these are more of good things to know before you cruise, otherwise you're gonna be sorry. The first one is very important, and that is most of these ports are tender ports. This is extremely important for those people that don't like tendering or have trouble with planning their day and usually just get off on a whim. You really have to plan accordingly or else you're gonna miss the boat, literally. These stops that are mostly tender stops are going to be places you will want to wake up early and get tender tickets early. A Greek Isles cruise is not one for sleeping in because you want to get off the ship very quickly and start exploring these incredible islands. So make a mental note when you go and you hear tender ports that you get off and get your tender tickets as soon as possible. The next bad is more of a need to know as well. There is a lot and lot of walking as well as stairs on rough terrain or things that aren't necessarily meant to be stairs. <laughs> There's a lot of marble or rock or cement or concrete or whatever you have it, hard surfaces that are uneven and very hard to walk long distances on. So if you're someone who has that trouble, maybe it would take uh, a good idea to go ahead and look at excursion options that might have more accessibility for van travel or something else because it is very difficult to walk. There's one port in particular that we have to mention and that is Santorini. I said this previously, Santorini kind of lies on top of cliffs, which means you have to get down from sea level up on top of the cliff. When you come into Santorini, your ship will be a tender port. You will get on the tender and then you will get off in an area that has just a few options for getting to the top of that cliff. One is a cable car, and that costs about six euros per person here currently in 2023. The second option is to walk up very difficult terrain, and the marble that you're walking on is extremely slippery, so you have to have a good pair of shoes if you are going to do that. It's a very, very long walk up, and it is very steep, so a high incline, so it's not something that we recommend. That path is actually a donkey trail. Now it isn't a trail as in it's just mud, it's actually marble, but it's very slippery marble. And so even if you're the best hikers, you could slip on any given one because the grip is barely there. It is meant for donkeys, you can take a donkey. We did not do that, we're not necessarily for that, but that is what it is meant for and you can take it up or down. One other option is that you can take a boat and pay a little bit more money to take you to one of the other portions of the island. And then at that portion of the island, they will bus you back to the cable cars. This was not a good experience for one of our clients that recently went and took this option. They dropped them a mile away from the cable cars and they had to walk back in the hot sun to then pay additional money to take the cable car down. Just know that if you are looking at taking that boat option. 
at the end of the day, the only reason you don't take the cable car is because the line builds so long, so quickly, so early. There's usually five ships at port at any given time. And if that happens, if you're the second or third ship in, there's already a line form before you can even get the first tender out. So make sure you are there as soon as possible and you might have to take one of the options less wanted to travel on just because the wait for that cable car is so long. We got very lucky. We were up at 6 a.m. We were on the first tender out of the first ship that was docked there for the day. So we were actually some of the first people in the cable car and up the top of the mountain. But then coming back, there was an hour wait for that cable car down. So we decided to walk the donkey trail. And let me just say, we do not recommend it. That was the sweatiest I've been for 25 minutes of my entire life. It is a lot of hard work. So be prepared. Buyer be warned. I think this next point goes without saying, but I have to say it because we are for everyone. Uh, if you don't watch our channel often, we are all about being as inclusive as possible. And even though we don't have some experiences, we try to watch out for different experiences that we would note might be not good for certain people. And one part is accessibility. For those in the access community, this is not a good itinerary to take for those that are needing accessibility. This is why a lot of stairs, a lot of rough terrain, not a lot of mobility capabilities anywhere on these islands. And this is very common in Europe in general, right? There's a lot of historic buildings that weren't set up for, for wheelchairs or for other accessible devices or products to be used. And so just know this, especially with tenders as well, you may not even be able to get off the ship, let alone up a hill or a cliff to see the beautiful sights. This is something that we absolutely hate. Uh, we always want things to be available for all groups of people, but it is the reality of the situation on the Greek Isles, and we feel like it's very important that we talk about it here on the review. As I stated, we got up super early and made it to the top of Santorini very quickly, but one of the negatives is that there's not a lot of bathrooms open in the morning. So we do highly recommend you use the bathroom before you get off of the ship in port. And just know most, most bathrooms are going to be located inside restaurants. So you may have to wait until you go into a restaurant for a coffee to actually use that facility. This next thing can be really bad if you don't know it. The water is not necessarily friendly to people outside of Greece. And what we mean by that is you need to drink out of water bottles and actually clear purified water only. Do not do water that is out of the tap uh, as you might have some trouble later on. The next thing on our list is that you will need euros. You need cash on hand. Many of the restaurants and shops were cash only. This is not something we knew before we went onto the islands and we wish we would have known because we would have brought a little bit more cash with us. Obviously there's plenty of places that take card, but we wanna make sure that you're aware because if there's that one item you really want or that one food item that you really want and they only take euros, uh, we don't want you to be disappointed and not get that option. Mykonos and Santorini have become some of the most popular destinations in the world. With that comes this expectation or ask for tips. We found that specifically when we went into restaurants on these islands, they were not shy about asking for tips at the end of the meal. Now keep in mind, tipping is not necessarily customary in these places, but you may get asked for a tip because they know you're tourist and they know that you are from a place that tips are the norm. Of course, if you want to tip, tip, but just know that it's usually not necessary unless if service is beyond what it is normally. Next bad is about excursions. They are pricey. And I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of them are places you could walk five to 10 minutes once you get to port on your own. For example, the windmills in Mykonos are beautiful, but it took us five minutes to walk to those windmills on our own. There's a whole tour that was $200 to go ahead and see the windmills that were a five to 10 minute walk away. Of course, if you're someone that needs a van or a shuttle of some sort, then maybe look at those options. But for a majority of people, they are very, very unhappy when they find out that it was just a five to 10 minute walk. They could have saved that 200 euros or $200. Something else that is a must know when visiting the Greek Isles is it is very hot and extremely humid. We actually, while we were in Mykonos, looked up what the weather was like in Orlando, Florida, 
and the weather was the exact same down to the temperature and humidity level. So we do think that the Greek Isles are going to be a lot more like the southern U.S. or maybe some of the Caribbean. Very hot, very humid, and specifically in Mykonos, very, very windy. I have to note here, on top of all this, with all the marble and all the very dark surfaces below you, the heat is just retained and just bakes. So even if you see it's 77 degrees, you will note that it feels 10 to 20 degrees hotter because of that marble below you just baking in the sun. Last bad before we get to our ugly here is early dinner is nearly impossible. And what we mean by that is these ports, you wanna stay off as long as possible, especially when you're tendering in and back to the ship. If you have early dinner, you're gonna to have to miss half your day just to be tendered back in time for your early dinner at 5.30, 6, or whatever it may be. So definitely plan accordingly. Try to get either anytime dining if it's possible or later dinner so you can be as flexible as possible and not miss a stop in the Greek Isles. Before we get to our ugly, we do just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up. That does help the channel more than you know. It is free to you at home and it means so much to Jared and I. The footage that you're about to see is disturbing. And I can already tell that there will be some people in the comments saying, whoa, I'm never going to Greece because of what I'm about to see. <laughs> but you have to trust us. Do not let this deter your decision to go on a Greek Isles cruise. This is just information that you have to know. Our ugly of Greek Isle cruises is the crowds. The crowds are wild. There are more people in these small alleyways and passages than we've ever seen at any cruise port. And that even includes Nassau Bahamas. Let's give you a few different tips from being able to best avoid the crowds. First, we highly recommend that you visit places very early in the morning. This is why we say get the first tender off the ship and get into the areas before everyone else. This will help you get your photo opportunities and get into some of these very busy places with very few people. A second cruise tip here is finding and hiring a private tour guide from the area, whether it be through Viator, Airbnb experiences, maybe TripAdvisor, that can take you in a private van or shuttle to these places that are off the beaten track. The places that other people don't know about and aren't necessarily published as much, of course, you can go to the main places, get the views in quick, and then head out to some of the villages that are less traveled so you can have a really enjoyable and relaxing day. To give an example of this, there was five people in our party. We hired a private tour guide for five hours in Santorini and it cost us $350 for all five of us. We felt like this was a great deal and that tour guide really did take us to the places we had to get to and then off the beaten path where we were away from crowds and really enjoyed our day in Santorini. In fact, it's from our tour guide that we learned that only 40,000 people live in Santorini, but throughout the summer, over 2 million people visit there. That gives you an idea of the amount of crowds that you are trying to stay away from or get ahead of when going out on your day. One last tip would be go at the very start or the very end of the touring season. Of course, the middle of summer is going to be the height where there will be the most visitors. If you can go maybe in May or later in the year like September, that will be a little bit more off or low season in terms of encountering people on the island. That's our good, bad, and ugly, our full, honest cruise review of the Greek Isles cruises. Let us know your thoughts below. What are your comments? Have you been on a Greek Isles cruise? Do you have your own tips to share? Or are you someone trying to plan your own? We are travel agents, both of us. So if you are someone who's looking to book your own Greek Isle cruise and you want to trust a travel advisor, go ahead and head to jjcruise.com and we will be happy to help. Well, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, See ya! Jay